What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Art of War. I'm Richard here, and I am I'm basically going to talk about a really exciting article that Games Workshop published, which is about brand new Tau rules, and I'm massively hyped for them because at the end of the day, Tau is one of the factions that I absolutely love playing. It's a ton of fun, regardless of what style, whether it's mission play, it's killing your opponent, doesn't matter. Love all the different Tau styles, and I could not be more excited that a Codex is coming. And so with that, they released a really cool article about a new detachment full of battle suits. And that is music to my ears, because the battle suit is fundamentally what I like the most about Tau. I know that a lot of you Tau players are very similar. You like Gundams, you like big, smashy robots trying to kill other things. And uh, Tau battle suits are basically that. Obviously, there's a pilot inside, but whether you like you know, Pacific Rim or anything like that, Tau probably appeals to you, and battle suits most of all. So I know some people don't particularly like the board control, like 60 breachers, you know, a bunch of pathfinders, you know, maybe some crude in there. They don't want to run hundreds of models in their Tau list, and a battle suit detachment is probably exactly what you're looking for to not have to run that many bodies. And I don't think it's necessary, I just think it plays 10th edition pretty well. So I'm really hoping that the rules previewed in this article will give us insight into a new detachment that'll do something interesting for Tau and allow you to play a style that's a bit more elite than uh, typically the list that have been doing really well for Tau. Now, I'm gonna preface this before I dive into the article by saying at the end of the day, I am excited for just new Tau detachments because Kalyun, as awesome as it is, turn three onward, when you basically can kill anything in the game with the wide amount of the sustained uh, hits that you're going to get all over the place, at the end of the day, the game, 10th edition, is a five-turn game. Turn two into turn three is the most defining moment of that game. And usually turn two is setting up for what's gonna happen over the next two turns and that's gonna basically decide the game. So not having your army rule active except for one unit potentially for turn two is, is a big downside. And we can see in the win rates that Tau typically struggles as currently designed against very aggressive MSU armies with a lot of durability. So. Orcs comes to mind, trucks, battle wagons, all this stuff, layers uh, to their army that you can't kill quick enough, and it's all on top of you immediately, especially if they go first. And then you have Chaos Knights is another good example, you know, 12 to 14 knight bodies jamming themselves up onto objectives. You know, Tau, as currently designed, can kill that, but they can only really do that effectively turn three onward once Kalyan is active. Before then, in, you know, it's a tricky prospect. You can do it. There are certain builds that can, but then they're weaker into other things. So, um, you know, Tau win rates have, you know, fallen basically against those type of armies, especially as they've gotten better across the edition. And uh, Tau typically performs the best against other relatively elite armies and other MSU type armies that don't really threat overload. They want to play a long game. Tau doesn't typically win their games by a gigantic margin, although it's possible. Uh, typically it's one, you know, within 10 to 20 points difference. You know, Tau doesn't really blow a lot of armies out because they're waiting until turn three. They're delaying, they're slowing the game down. So I just want a Tau detachment that has an army, a detachment rule that's just active. I just want that rule whenever. I don't care what turns. I don't care about turns one, two, or three. I don't care about the battle round three, four, five. I just want a rule that I have the whole game. And that's what I'm most looking forward to, is uh, allowing me, the player, to exercise my powerful rules whenever I want, like most other factions in the game. And I think they got innovative with Tau in the index phase, but I think a lot of those innovations should fit into a game that has a lot of strong rules with downsides. And unfortunately, there's a bunch of other armies that have really strong rules with basically no downsides. Uh, some armies like Tau and Admech have a lot of downsides to their rules, like reining them in. And then, you know, there are other armies, like Eldari was one, that basically had no downsides whatsoever and could do whatever they want. And uh, I like the design space of Tau. You know, I like that you have really strong rules, but you have to give up things to access them. But I don't like that it's uneven across the game. So I'm really hoping the Codex helps solve these situations. So let's go ahead without further ado and dive right in here and see what we got. So battlesuits are at the forefront of military conquest. Of course, who doesn't like that? Look at this commander. I mean, 
how can you not like a Tau Commander? I probably have, you know, like 12 plus Commander models. Um, obviously more than Rule of Three, but I just love the Commander. Um, the, the kit is amazing. From Prowling Stealth Battle Suits, the Towering Riptide. Riptide. Games Workshop knows about the Riptide. These mighty combat arm armors allow Firecast pilots to grapple with the worst horrors of the galaxy can muster. And even if you're not up for ringing the Crute dinner bell, I am not. I am not. I don't want to run a pure crude army. I'm a traditionalist. I want my battle suits. I want my fire cast infantry, and I want to blow people up. I don't want to try and play some newfangled crude army. Crude are there to protect the key Tau resources, and that's just my fundamental belief, and I'm going to stick with it. So won't be ringing any crude dinner bell, but I will use crude as sacrificial units to achieve my own ends in my imperial conquest with the Tau Empire. Okay, so new, new detachment does things for battle suits. Let's find out. If you're a fan of filling the battlefield with high-tech combat walkers like a certain red renegade, this guy, that guy, the retaliation cadre is just what the ethereals ordered. They better not be ordering me. I am farsight. So detachment rule exemplifies the daring of these bonded heroes delivering a high-stakes, close-range playstyle. That sounds awesome where battle suits can descend upon enemy units and blast them to pieces. Mwah. Sweet battle suits. Have you ever wished your burst cannons could hit strength 6 AP1? Yes. What about six shots instead of four games workshop? How about that? Really mow down infantry. Um, consider uh, your wishes answered. So let's look at this. Bonded heroes. Each time a Tau Empire battle suit model from your army makes a ranged attack, targets a unit within 12, plus one strength, if the uh, attack targets a unit within six, plus one AP, that is a good rule. And look at that. It doesn't have any relationship to turns. Don't want anything related to battle rounds. This is just active. And guess what? I already mentioned one of the things that Tau don't like is really aggressive armies that want to sit in the table, you know, move advance everything uh, that's been deployed on the line up to the middle objectives turn one, and then turn two be charging into your half of the board. Well, guess what? closer you get in this detachment, the stronger the Tau army gets. And that is a huge, huge benefit. And I legitimately think this is a great detachment rule. And obviously battle suits, let's talk about them. So you've got the Riptide that they mentioned, they mentioned stealth suits, they are battle suit and do, um, do benefit a lot from this. And um, then you also have the ghost keel, potentially going to like on your cyclic ion rakers, strength nine, AP three, flat three. Pretty tasty profile. And on top of that, you also have obviously crisis suits. So crisis suits getting plus one AP, plus one strength, opens up a lot more options in their weapons. You're probably still gonna see the traditional ones, but I think something like a missile pod, especially if there's other ways to increase AP, could get interesting. In addition, um, obviously like burst cannons genuinely do get a lot more interesting. Tons of Strength 6, AP1, ignores cover access. That's going to be pretty darn solid. Um, now, there aren't too many Horde armies out there as much. Like, you don't have to worry about every single matchup having, like, a 20 Necron Warrior equivalent with, like, max durability. So I don't... Maybe if, as the meta shifts, it'll become more valuable on the lower Strength, lower AP weapons. But on the anti-elite weapons, this really means that, you know, sometimes you don't even need ignores cover for your unit, because it'll go from like Riptide AP3 to AP4. Usually you don't need that. They'll take a four-up invuln regardless. So you can go ahead and buff that unit with something that doesn't have the marker like keyword, and it's totally fine. So it opens up things like that, which is quite interesting. But uh, this is this is a great rule. <laughs> Opponent aggr aggressively rushes at you, you get big benefits against them, something Tau desperately want. The Tau Empire isn't reckless or wasteful, though they can make use of canny stratagems, keep their battle suits out of harm's way. Shortened Blade allows close range suits to stay uh, safely in orbit before dropping down at near point blank range. Perfect for eliminating enemy tanks with fusion blasters and then using the Torch Star Gambit to jet away. So, Shortened Blade strategic ploy, so you can't uh, shenanigan it with uh, any sort of CP stuff. Your movement phase, one Tau Empire battle suit unit with uh, Deep Strike. 3.1 away. 2 CP. Uh, I think this is the only one that is 2 CP in the game. They're almost all 1 CP. But you can use it on a battle suit, so 
This obviously is going to be threatened turns two, turn three. In addition, um, I guess if you end up going second, um, I guess there maybe there's going to be a way to interact with that. I know the old, um, what was it? It was the, there was an old stealth suit thing that allowed you to actually come in turn one. Maybe that could come back and that could make you get more value out of this. Because uh, right now only Vespid can go back into reserves in the later game and uh, they're not a battle suit. So unless there are ways to go back into reserve, you're basically going to have mostly turn two, turn three to think about using this. But frankly, already that could threaten to do a lot of damage. Now on the other side, a lot of armies have been incentivized because of Hypercrypt, because of, uh, you know, GSC or Chaos Demons, Grey Knights being strong. A bunch of armies have 3.1 away and basically use it as many times as they can. So a lot of armies have teched for 12-inch no-go zones. I know my Admech list personally has three Technoarchaeologists. So like, three bubbles of 12 inches, you can't come in. So there are going to be some matchups where this doesn't really matter. 2CP is a little pricey. But for those times where they are low on screens and you can just clear their backfield out and be like, my crisis suits are just going to be back there, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty darn, it's a solid tool to have access to. And then Torch Star Gambit, I'm going to assume this is Strike and Fade, it's 1 CP. Strategic Ploy as well, so can't be modified the cost of it, that's great. And you pick a Tau Empire Battle Suit unit that is Fly, with non-engage range, you can make a normal move. And you can't charge one CP strike and fade equivalent. Torch Star Gambit is a cooler name than Strike and Fade. That is going to be used exactly five times. <laughs> Maybe not turn one, but certainly it's going to be used at four turns out of the five turns. That is just a ludicrously good strat. Uh, obviously, we ranked in the top 10 stratagems in the game, Strike and Fade, Fire and Fade type equivalents as being one of the top five archetypes you can access. Tau had a two CP version. Now they have, in this detachment, a 1CP version. That probably means Strike and Fade is not in Kalyan, because uh, usually they don't like doubling up the same type of strats. Um, so hopefully Kalyan gets something else interesting. But 1CP, uh, effective Strike and Fade, that is that strong. So the detachment rule is very good. 3.1 away is cool. I don't know how many times you're going to actually use it, but threatening it is very nice. And then Torch Star Gambit is straight up automatic awesome stratagem obviously and uh, will be used minimum four times if not all five turns so really really strong obviously this is going to be a good detachment uh, just those two rules alone are going to bring you quite a quite a distance all right since we're on the topic of crisis battle suits one of the coolest things is the current edition lets every unit get its own special ability in their data sheet while this is great, uh, it hits a snag with very flexible units. And, um, you know, something that's good for flamers isn't good for uh, long range missile pods. Well, you nerf the missile pod profile, and that's the biggest downside about the missile pods is you really, you really nerf the range and the AP, which is not ideal. Imperial strategists have addressed this issue by spreading flexible tanks like uh, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the Tau Empire Codex splits Crisis Battle Suits into three distinct data sheets based around classic configurations. Veteran Tau Commanders might recognize them. You got Fire Knife, Sunforge, and that Star Scythe. Sunforge configuration melts down heavy targets with twin fusion blasters. I hope that doesn't mean one shot twin linked. I really hope that that wording does not mean that. <laughs> um, but. I was obviously the biggest fan of fusion suits, so hopefully that unit is good because I really like uh, fusion, even though it's short range. What are the other ones? Fire knife is mix and match plasma rifles and missile pods. Okay, uh, a plasma unit has been pretty meta, so I wouldn't be surprised if this was uh, a pretty good data sheet to use. And then star scythe chooses between burst cannons and flamers, so this is going to be like one of. I have to assume it's the cheapest one. And that's going to be your anti-infantry unit. Now, once again, plus one strength, plus one AP when you get close is pretty decent on flamers and burst cannons. But there aren't too many just horde armies out there that your other units can't help. Like, breachers are so good at killing those type of things anyway. So you might not want to spend a points premium on this. But um, it could be interesting if there are other uh, mechanics to make it better. 
All right, they're all crisis suits, but now they get custom abilities. Take the Sunforge, uh, which helps mitigate their low rate of fire on the fusion blasters by giving them powerful rerolls against ideal targets. Love rerolls. And with the detach and roll, you're firing strength 10 AP5. I was already doing that. Oh, not strength 10, but I was doing AP5 ignores cover in uh, Kalyan with the uh, point blank ambush. Uh, once it was that turn, turn three. But uh, yeah, reroll wounds and damage against monsters and vehicles does make me quite interesting, which means that they must not be twin linked. So it must not be twin linked because obviously if your data sheet rolls reroll wounds and you're twin linked, that would be a little bit of an oopsie. So I assume they're not, uh, but you never know. <laughs> uh, but monster reroll wounds and, and damage. Rerolling damage is a, is a big deal. The amount of times that a roll low on the damage is enormously painful but the consistency now you can 3.1 away fusion you can get exactly up in somebody's grill quite easily so that's going to be pretty interesting price dependent obviously uh these new dis new distinctions have another benefit for battle suit aficionados no army can contain the same data sheet more than three rule of three and you could get more what this means you can squeeze up to nine crisis teams into your roster that's probably far more than you this whoever wrote this doesn't know about bring it down but um <laughs> you're probably not going to run that many uh unless their da other data sheet rules are ludicrous but uh i don't expect that this rule is quite good though on sunforge um don't worry if your crisis suits have different armaments the current data sheet will be added to legends well don't care about that commanders can join all three of these new units and retain their own flexible weapon systems with enforcer lowering ap Oh, I was wishing they, they changed that because at the end of the day, you're just taking the four up in Vuln anyway, uh, just to keep your mod, make them as durable as possible. So minus one AP, if it worked in combat as well, then I would like it a bit more. But uh, ah, the speed of the Cold Star, let's see, the 12 inch move and you get assault. I mean, it's just vastly superior to the Enforcer and they've keep, kept reducing the cost of the Enforcer. But his status sheet rule really should be changed to something else. Um, it, armor of Contempt really matters on two-up save. Like, if you could take Iridium Armor still and get a two-up save there, two-up save, Armor of Contempt, sitting in cover, that's strong. You can't. You're a three-up save. So it's a lot less strong, and then you can access four-up invuln. Once again, there's not too many breakpoints where it's super impactful, whereas 12-inch move plus assault is dramatically more uh, impactful, obviously. So was hoping that they would change the enforcer commander personally but or at least you know if they didn't change the rule entirely make it just attacks because then against melee attacks then you start getting a little bit interesting you do finally get charged okay well at least i could potentially tank some of this extra melee damage as well so whatever uh more tower rules are on their way as the awesome crude hunting pack which is your first chance to get the tau empire codex which goes up for pre-order this saturday so hype Saturday is going to be massively hyped. Well, I'm already excited about this detachment because my favorite units are battle suits and a rule that's active for all five battle rounds is very powerful. And it also helps because Tau like to play a longish game. Now, you, without Kalyan, that you know kind of situation might change. But as is, Tau likes doing damage over the course of several turns instead of all at once. So if that remains, being able to really threaten an opponent if they get close to you is going to force them to play more conservatively. Otherwise, all of a sudden, your army has a huge benefit of plus one strength, plus one AP. That's going to put a lot of damage on, uh, on a variety of armies. So I think this detachment is already quite interesting. I'd love to see the rest of the rules on here. But overall, very happy with uh, what's previewed, especially one CP Torch Star Gambit. I'm a, <laughs> I've never done an actual competitive Gambit in the terms of mission, but I am going to Torch Star Gambit every single time. Uh, so hopefully uh, you find this exciting. And um, as soon as there are more you know, tower rules to talk about, I will be talking about them. I'll be playing them whenever I can. And uh, I'm just really, really excited for Tau to get some new play styles because the army is very fun for me. But it's fun because it's a it's a it's a challenge. It's a real challenge. Um, if you play other armies and then come to Tau, you all of a sudden it's such a weird type of army to play. 
and it's not necessarily intuitive. You have to be very, very careful. It's not like the Tau and the Lore, where you're just like shooting things really strong up close, although this detachment gets close to that. But Kalyun, as it exists in the Index, is very much about a lot of move blocking and delay tactics and charging to tie things up. And it's not something that, if you aren't like an experienced 40k player, are going to immediately see those plays. So I hope some of these detachments make Tau more fun to play for the vast majority of Tau players. And this seems like it's definitely going to do that. So very exciting there. Well, thanks so much for joining. Hope you enjoyed this breakdown. And uh, just really excited to see some more Tau stuff. So long for now. And uh, if you like this type of content, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about us. In addition, as soon as we are able, in the war room, theworm.vhx.tv, there will be tons of Tau content. And there's a three-day free trial with our own platform. So uh, be on the lookout for whenever that those new rules come out. We'll be talking about them. We'll be releasing lots of content. So thank you so much for joining. We'll see you all next time. So long for now.